Over the past year, audiences worldwide have rejected forced DEI measures and female centricity in male-driven franchises and IPs, something which has cost Disney, Warner, Sony, and a boatload of major game developers billions in losses between them. However, Jennifer Salky, the Kathleen Kennedy of Amazon Studios, missed the memo, because she just committed to doubling down on girl power, and she even has ambitions of acquiring Lord of the Rings wholesale. Let's dive in. This video is sponsored by Black Forest Supplements. New viewers may not be familiar with Jennifer Salky, so before we get into the news, let's do a quick recap. She first came into her current position after her predecessor was me tooed out of the company in what looked like a politically motivated hit job. One of her first actions was cancelling the in-development Conan the Barbarian live-action series from showrunner Ryan Condal over concerns about the toxic masculinity on display. What was so bad about it, you wonder? Well, the pilot script to that series was based on the original Conan story The Frost Giant's Daughter, and as coincidence would have it, I just did a video breaking down The Frost Giant's Daughter only a few days ago where I do go over exactly what she is likely to have found to be so objectionable that she cancelled the series right away. You'll find that video linked to in the description. But without Conan, Amazon wanted to find another high-profile fantasy series for a more adult audience to supplement their then-in-development Rings of Power. So Sulky found that in Robert Jordan's The Wheel of Time, a series of novels that is all about balance between genders. So naturally, Sulky made it female-centric and sidelined all the male leads, all while pushing for the same in The Rings of Power, which is what she's all about. Meanwhile, Ryan Condal, the showrunner that she had fired when she cancelled Conan, was swooped up by HBO, and he rather quickly developed House of Dragon for them, which would go on to compete directly with Amazon's Rings of Power, and crush it in the ratings. So nice going, Jennifer. In short though, what Jennifer Salky stands for as an executive, and what she tends to bring forth in the projects that she directly and personally oversees, is strong female leads. Some even speculate that Galadriel is a self-insert, and of course, weak, submissive, and subjugated male characters, of the type we have gotten so many of in recent years, many of whom promote selfishness, overindulgence, and unhealthy lifestyles. In the process, tacitly encouraging everyone to let themselves go, instead of keeping mentally and physically fit and healthy, which is made ever more difficult to do. One of the many examples that spring to mind here is the FDA's attempt at taking away NMN, which happens to be Black Forest's star offering. Not because it doesn't work, mind you, quite the contrary, because it works all too well, so much so in fact that they're trying to reclassify this natural supplement as a performance-enhancing drug. You see, NMN is vital for the functioning of the 37 trillion cells in your body. A study by Harvard claims that NMN can help reduce weight, cholesterol, and even blood pressure in overweight adults, meaning it not only slows down, but can functionally reverse aging. I've been taking it for several months now myself, and I can vouch for the positive benefits, as I run faster, lift heavier, punch harder, and have more excess energy to create videos for you all, and I want you to experience these gains as well. So since Black Forest sponsors this video for the next 48 hours, you can buy two and get one for free, so you can stock up now while you still can. Link is in the description. That said, and now that we are all up to speed with who Jennifer Salky is and what she stands for, let's see her double down. This all comes from the Variety exclusive. Amazon Studios boss Jennifer Salky teases the idea of you sequel reflects on strategy and that 60 million deal with Phoebe Waller-Bridge. The story proper reads, Last week, Amazon Prime Video flexed its international muscle with a host of events around Europe, including a Prime Video Presents Trailblazers event, celebrating women on and off screen. 
That sets the tone right there, so you already know where this is going. The write-up continues. During the Whirlwind European Tour, two of Amazon's most senior female executives, Jennifer Zolke, head of Amazon MGM Studios, and Kelly Day, VP of International for Prime Video, sat down with Variety to talk about celebrating women, how the industry has changed over the past five years, what the international strategy is going forward, and what's in store for some of their biggest franchises, including Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, and Tomb Raider. Addressing the Trailblazers event in London, Salki said, Our UK team really took notice of the commitment we've made to female programming over the last few years. It's such a drumbeat of just who we are and what we're trying to accomplish. While Kelly Day continued, We have been quite intentional about trying to really build this female-led slate. We've got these incredible female-led characters now doing big action sequences and leading big action series, like Priyanka in Citadel. It feels exciting and like we're actually breaking some new ground, so I think it's great to be able to celebrate. Salki then continued, Big genre pieces that are global big male action pieces. We know those things work. There's data galore to support those decisions. But it's like, let's get out there and break ground with women and see the results of that. Let's pause on that for a moment. So she's acknowledging that when you have big global male action pieces starring men, then that works, and everyone knows it, and all the data in the world supports it. But she really wants to find out what would happen if someone were to put a kick in it, make her gay! Because like Kathleen Kennedy, that's kind of what she's been doing. She just seems oblivious to the fact that everyone else who tried already found out. Amazon still needs to find out though, it would seem. While the star of Reacher hasn't exactly endeared himself to fans, let's say, the show is nonetheless a fan favorite, and in no small part because Salki has very little to do with it. She will, presumably, be more involved with the female-centric spin-off series though, which was announced during this Trailblazer event. Based around Maria Stan's Frances Negley character, Salki said about it, when Reacher creator Nick Santora and Skydance came to us with an idea to build something off her, they wrote the material and we thought it was fantastic. It was very exciting, especially to have a female lead. Because that, of course, is what makes it interesting to Salki. The conversation then turned to Rings of Power, which you will recall has an all-female directing team, which apparently was the takeaway from season 1, lose all the male directors. Let's see how that worked out. Variety asked, how have you found the reaction to season 2? To which Salki answered, obviously very different marketing levels and all of that to season 1. But that being said, over 55 million people at this point have engaged since Season 2 launched. And if you look at the long-term trajectory, which is how this company looks at an asset like that, this is a long-term investment in that franchise. There's well over 150 million viewers watching and engaging with the show, so I feel really good. I think we all do. That deliberately misleading word salad is of course completely delusional, because by any external metric, given the production cost and Nielsen ratings, the show is a massive flop. That indeed may have prompted the follow-up question, is there any change to the 50 episode commitment? Because remember, they pre-committed to 5 seasons of 10 episodes each. So she answered, I don't think so. That commitment is never the thing that's driving what we're doing, which is Hollywood for that it's absolutely driving everything they're doing. She continued, We'll continue to make the show as long as we see global customers loving it and watching it to the point where it's a business. If that were true, they would have cancelled after season one. But she continues, Obviously, we need a large amount of people showing up. And there are a large amount of people, so there's no debate about whether or not the show will continue. Yeah, because there's also that commitment. Then the conversation moved beyond the show itself, with Variety asking, Embracer, 
who've had a rocky 18 months, currently owns the majority of Token's IP. Could we see a situation in which Amazon potentially acquires the company? This is where things get a tad more interesting. Asked whether or not Amazon could acquire all of Embracer, and in the process, all of their brands, including Lord of the Rings, Salki answered, We're always talking about those opportunities, but I don't have anything to share right now. That would be because the decision to acquire all of Embracer is above her pay grade. And even if that were to happen, it still wouldn't fundamentally change anything where the Lord of the Rings is concerned because Warner still has the movie rights, and they will continue to reside with Warner for as long as they use them. So just for the Lord of the Rings, Embracer probably isn't worth it to Amazon. But Embracer has another property that Amazon has a stake in, namely Tomb Raider. Still on the topic of Embracer, Variety next asks, Embracer also owns Tomb Raider, which Amazon revealed it's rebooting with Phoebe Waller-Bridge at the helm. How's that going? To which Sulky replied, Tomb Raider is really exciting, and Phoebe is well into it and working in close partnership with Tomb Raider general manager Dallas Dickinson and the game producers. And it's going to be very exciting, but I don't have any new updates. Later, the conversation moved to Amazon's $60 million deal with Phoebe Waller-Bridge, about which Sulky said, We're so happy now that we retained her, because she's obsessed with and grew up playing Lara Croft Tomb Raider. So the fact that she's the creator and bringing this character to life, we think is going to be a huge franchise for us. Amusingly, Kathleen Kennedy thought exactly the same thing when she brought Phoebe Waller-Bridge into Indiana Jones, which obviously didn't happen. And Sulky also thought that the Rings of Power would be a huge franchise for Amazon, yet there is no external evidence to support the notion that it is. Still, all of this goes to show that despite the billions others have lost on trying to skew male brands away from male audiences, Amazon has learned nothing because Jennifer Sulky has learned nothing, and she is still the one running the show over at Amazon. So, are you excited for all of her future female-centric Amazon content? Let me know in the comments. And before you go, remember to stock up on NMN before it is reclassified as a drug, because it is that efficient. Use the link in the description or pinned comment where for the next 48 hours you can buy two and get one for free.